Welcome back to Seat Time. I'm Woody, and this little elastomer does more than just add some KTM Orange to my Sherco. It's an integral part of the Mako 360 handlebar mount that you have seen me not installing in other videos, which we're gonna touch on in just a minute. The Mako 360 is also a small part to a much bigger ecosystem, be it anti-vibration, vibration dampening, or abuse dampening. So we're gonna talk about more of this ecosystem while we install this Mako 360 on my Sherco. But first, before we get to that, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Why have I not installed the Mako 360 yet? What issues arose? So I'm deep in the woods of Colorado, about to install the Mako 360 while making the small parts video. I pull everything out, I get the handlebar off, I remove the clamps, and I attempt to install the perch. Unfortunately, it does not fit. The pillow on top of the triple clamp is too big. The perch cannot sit on it. I reach out to Lance and he says, that's not right. Do you have a caliper? I do not have a caliper. We decide I'm not going to install it. I'm going to wait till I get home. I get home, whip out some calipers. The pillows on the top of this triple clamp are too big to fit in the Mako 360, but this Mako 360 perch is just like every other. There's got to be some kind of one-off weirdness going on here. We reach out to Sherco. The top clamps for my 18300 SER have a different part number than all of the other top clamps. So this is a one-off situation. So right now, you know what we're going to do? We're going to whip out a file and we're going to make this a little bit bigger so it fits. The install of the Mako 360 is pretty straightforward. Use some blue Loctite on the perch bolts and tighten them to 50 foot pounds. I'm placing the bar elastomers with the crack facing down. Put the shark bite in the top clamp, plus sign in the front, and lay it down. Center everything up and start tightening down the bolts. 12 foot pounds for the top clamp bolts. For the shark bite, tighten the front two first to 12 foot pounds, then the back two to 12 foot pounds. Boom, done. Now let's not get into any hate comms, but right now we're gonna talk about why I chose the Mako 360 over other products out on the market like the Flex handlebars. I chose the Mako 360 because it allowed me to keep the Astra Chris Birch handlebars that I've been running. I've really enjoyed having these much lower bars. I like the sweep, I like the way that they work in my hands. I do feel like they bring me in a little bit more of an attack position in turns and I've really enjoyed them. I didn't want to get different bars. So the flex bars only have that dampening in one plane, where obviously the Mako 360, the whole concept is that there's 360 degrees of vibration dampening, of abuse dampening. We're not trying to crack talk anybody. Everybody makes great products, and there's different people that are gonna buy different products for different reasons. Nobody make it weird. I don't know, it's the comments on YouTube, so if you wanna make it weird, have a little bit of fun with it, but don't be a But where did all this start? Why does a product like the Flex Handlebars or like the Mako 360 exist? That's what I wanna talk about now. Some of the other areas that you can find places to get vibration dampening or abuse reduction so that you can help have more fun, ride longer on the motorcycle, and just be a little bit more of a badass while you're getting seat time. Dirt bikes have a combustion engine and due to that, they vibrate. Manufacturers try to help with that vibration by introducing counterbalancers and or different frame materials. The good news for all of us enthusiasts is that there are aftermarket companies trying to help with vibration dampening and abuse reduction. Some stock dirt bikes come with rubber washers that sit between the triple clamps and the handlebar clamps. This is a quick way for manufacturers to try and help with vibration dampening, but it doesn't always play out well. So much so, there are aftermarket kits to replace the cone rubber washers with aluminum bar mount bushings. Apparently this setup is keen to twist during a crash, which then forces the rider to head back to the truck, instead of the closest tree, to straighten their bars back out. If you're looking for a simple, price conscious way to start going down the vibration dampening rabbit hole, I'd look at the Fast Company anti-vibration handlebar inserts. They mount inside your handlebars and have brass fittings and elastomers to help tame vibrations. You can run full wrap bark busters with their threaded version, but you know how we feel about that. Oh, shit. 
The next step in the totem pole of vibration dampening is trying to reduce forces within the handlebar clamps themselves. I first tried the X-Trig PHDS bar mount back in 2013-ish when I was still riding my KTM 300 two-stroke. FYI, PHDS stands for Progressive Handlebar Dampening System. Like most elastomer-based systems, they offer a variety of stiffnesses for different riders' needs. BRP, which stands for Billet Racing Products, has come at vibration dampening with a more robust system. Their four-post rubber-mounted triple clamp aims at reducing vibration, while also removing the known twisting that can happen with other two-post mounted options. Their offering will run you around $300, which starts to get up there in price. I also wonder how the triple clamp performs against stock triple clamps. The triple clamps that come stock come stock for a reason. They generally perform the best in the ways the OEM wants the bike to handle and to perform. Before we talk about the flex handlebars and the Mako 360, we need to mention ODI's controlled flex handlebars and Pro Taper's fusion handlebars. Both of these bars do the same thing in slightly different ways. These handlebars sit somewhere in between a crossbar and a crossbarless oversized handlebar when it comes to flex characteristics. The ODI Control Flex has an elastomer inside for tunability, where the Pro Taper Fusion has an on-off crossbar feel. The Fusion is an option if you find yourself going between a crossbar and without a crossbar. The CFT starts to add some elastomer tunability to vibration damping. Now, Flex Handlebars. Fast Company mentions that they focus on two areas. The first is absorbing abuse, and the second is ergonomics. The way the flex handlebars move stays within the same plane as your suspension. This keeps them laterally stiff so you're not steering through the abuse reduction. I ran flex handlebars on my 2015 KTM 350 and they helped a lot. So much so, my baby hands had trouble adapting back to a bike without them when attending a few races with the Arrive and Ride program. The guys at Fast also focus on ergonomics making sure the flex handlebar you receive is built for your riding style and desire in bar ergonomics. At $400, they aren't cheap, but they do exactly what they say they will do, which is reduce the abuse to your hands. Their flex ecosystem has evolved a lot, creating many ways for riders to run different steering dampeners, GPS attachments, and more. The Mako 360 handlebar clamp is up next. And even though it's not a handlebar, it tends to be a direct competitor to the Flex handlebars. The way XC Gear, the company who makes the Mako 360, chooses to address vibration dampening and abuse reduction is different from Fast Company. They wrap the handlebar in elastomers that give 360 degrees of dampening. The shark bite part of the mount is what keeps the bars from rolling too much fore and aft or from having too much side to side movement. XC Gear has evolved the Mako ecosystem as well over time, allowing for different GPS mounting options. The Mako 360 is also in the $400 range, so it's not a cheap addition. I told you earlier my reasons for choosing the Mako 360 as an addition to my Sherco. If you're trying to choose between these two options, don't hesitate to reach out to either company. I know Fast Company and XC Gear both want you to be happy with the way you spend your money and have a better experience while riding on the trail. Don't only use the hate comms on YouTube videos and social posts to make your decision. To close out vibration dampening, both Fast Company and XC Gear make dirt bike pegs to make your ride less aggressive. As before, both companies came to a solution in two different ways. Fast Company has adjustable pins on a CNC plate that houses an elastomer. This stops any metal on metal contact. XC Gear sticks with their 360 degree approach by creating a steel peg that houses two elastomers for fore and aft and side to side movement dampening. I hope that was entertaining and I hope you learned something. If you've gone down the vibration dampening rabbit hole, what parts did you add? What have you done to your bike? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to support Seat Time, you can do it. Shop.seattime.co. If we don't get a chance to see you on the trail, we'll at least be able to see you on the internet. Enjoy getting seat time. Peace. Hey, look, guys, more rocks. Oh.